How to decimate debt. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my afternoon stein of coffee and I hope you're all having a good Sunday. A lot of you would already be on holidays, rushing for Christmas, and there's still time to buy those last minute Christmas presents. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about some strategies for paying off debt with all the things that we've been discussing in the news and the media and just the general state of the economy and the fact that more and more people are saving, I think more people would be interested in just different strategies for how people pay off debt. Now, I only learned about these recently and frankly, they would be (laughs) common sense to a lot of people. You would have done it without even thinking, but sometimes articulating and talking about something, you know, making it quite clear It's useful and it helps you spread and share ideas. So we will jump here to two types of paying off debt. And this is from Investopia, one of my favorite websites. The first is the debt snowball strategy. And the other methodology is called the debt avalanche strategy. These are two approaches to paying off your debt. Now we used probably the avalanche, well, for us, the avalanche and the snowball tended to work out the same way. The smallest debts were the most highest interest bearing. When we were, you know, consolidated, I consolidated a whole lot of our debt. I took advantage of the property, the capital gains we had on our property or the equity gains we had on our property to consolidate all of our debt. And then we just decimated the more expensive ones. And that was for our personal and for the business to the point now where, where we're just, you know, I'm slogging the mortgage. It's the mortgage and we've still got the hex loans and the hex is just not that high interest. So we're using the avalanche method, but I can see how the snowball method can be very effective because it has a lot to do with psychology and actually seeing an outcome. So let's have a look through this guy. So debt snowball is a method of debt repayment in which debitor lists each of his or her debts from smallest to largest and not including the mortgage then devotes extra money each month to paying off the smallest debt first, making only the minimum monthly repayments to all the other debts. So the objective of this and the goal of this is to see an outcome, get a result first. You'll feel good after you've decimated that smallest debt. And you can understand we're talking the smallest financial debt too, not the the one that has got the smallest interest, but it may also have that. So once the smallest debt is paid off, the debitor starts putting extra money each month towards paying off the second smallest debt, while continuing to make only minimum monthly payments on all other debts. The debitor continues this process paying off each debt from the smallest to the largest until all the debts are paid in full. The debt snowball method is advocated by David Ramsey, the host of popular call-in personal finance advice radio show and best-selling author of several books and programs on getting out of debt. So, I mean, it seems like a a useful strategy because you will get that positive feedback. Once one minimum, you know, once one loan is gone, you'll be excited. You'll be amped up. It'll be good. So I can understand the advantage of this. So breaking down the debt snowball. Each debt's interest rate is not a factor. And this is the main difference in selecting the order in which debts are repaid using the debt snowball method. While repaying debt starting with the highest interest debt and ending with the lowest interest debt, a method called the debt avalanche, will cost debitors less interest over over the long run if they stick with the program. The debt snowball method can be more effective in reality because of the psychological benefits of generating a win each time a debt is paid in full. And that, I think that is one of the most important methods. I can see, honestly, I can see people starting off with the debt snowball, you know, starting off with it, knocking over a few smaller ones and then going, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting the taste for this now and then moving on to an avalanche approach, paying the high interest ones first. I can see people doing a combination. And I can really see how this can be a great way for someone to get started if you've got yourself into debt. Paying off five debts can seem more manageable if the list is quickly whittled down to a single debt by paying off the smaller debts first. The debitor might get frustrated and quit the repayment plan if the highest interest debt were one of the largest debts and had to be repaid at the beginning of the plan. 
So how to apply the debt snowball strategy? Here's an example of how a debt snowball works. Let's say an individual can afford to put $1,000 each month towards retiring his three sources of debt. $2,000 worth of credit card with a minimum monthly payment of $50, $5,000 worth of auto loan debt with a minimum monthly payment of $300, and $30,000 student loan with a minimum monthly payment of $400. Using the snowball method of debt payment, he will spend a total of $750 on paying each debt's minimum monthly payments. He will put the remaining $250 towards the credit card debt because it is the smallest of the three debts. Once the credit card debt has been pay- completely paid off, the extra payment will go towards retiring the second largest debt, the auto loan. At that point, the debtor will be spending $700 a month on minimum monthly payments and will have $300 extra to put towards the auto loan each month. Once the auto loan is paid off, all $1,000 will go towards the student loan until it, is, it too is paid in full and the individual is debt free, like a snowball each paid off debt frees more cash towards eliminating the remaining debts. So what do you think of this strategy, guys? Have you used it to pay off your debts? Let us know in the comments. It seems like a smart approach, and I can see the psychological benefits being the huge factor here. I really can. Now let's jump and have a look at the other approach, the debt avalanche approach. So the debt avalanche is a type of accelerated debt repayment plan. Essentially, a debtor allocates enough money to maintain the minimum payment on each source of debt and devotes any remaining repayment funds to the debt with the highest interest rate. Using the debt avalanche approach, once the debt with the highest interest rate is entirely paid off, then the extra repayment funds go towards the next highest interest-bearing loan. The system continues until all the debts are paid off. So important to be successful before embarking on the debt avalanche program you should have enough money in the bank for both living expenses and emergencies. Well, I mean, yeah, that goes with that, that goes without saying. But I guess it is good advice before you get into this. You want to have a, you know, some emergency money aside. How does a debt avalanche work? The first step in launching a debt avalanche program is to de- designate an amount of your monthly income that is available to pay debts. This amount should come from any funds not currently obliged for living expenses, such as rent, daycare, groceries, or transportation. For example, imagine you have $500 available each month after living expenses to put towards paying down your debt, and your current loans include $1,000 on a credit card with 20%. Damn. $1,250 monthly car payments at 6%. $5,000 line of credit with an 8% rate. For simplicity's sake, assuming each debt has a minimum monthly repayment of $50, except for the car loan, where the minimum monthly repayment would be the regular monthly installment. Okay? You would need to need to allot $100 towards paying each loan's minimum monthly payment, 50 times 2. The remaining $400 would add to the money devoted to your highest interest debt. In this example, you pay $450 towards settling the credit card debt with the 20% interest rate. Assuming you do not add additional charges to the balance, the credit card debt would be paid off entirely by the fourth month. Now the extra funds would go towards retiring the second highest interest bearing debt, the line of credit. Finally, all $500 would go to the debt with the lowest rate of interest, the car loan. So, and here's the main issue with the debt avalanche as opposed to the snowball method. The debt avalanche reduces interest, but it takes discipline. It takes discipline. And I I honestly, I think, you know, a strategy I would suggest, and not that I'm giving financial advice, guys, I'm an architect. I'm the worst profession to give financial advice. I can see if people are struggling with the debt avalanche, maybe try the debt snowball for a while, get a few goals, you know, get some wins, and then switch over to this one. Once you get the taste for it, once you are embracing the joy of missing out, JOMO. So advantages of the debt avalanche. The advantage of the debt avalanche method of debt repayment is that it minimizes the amount of interest you pay while working towards your debt-free goal, as long as you stick to the plan. It also lessens the amount of time it takes to get out of debt, assuming consistent payments, but less interest accumulates. Interest adds to the debts because lenders use compound interest rates. 
The rate at which compound interest accrues depends on the frequency of compounding, such that the higher the number of compounding periods, the greater the compound interest. Most credit card balances will compound interest on a daily basis, but there are loans where the interest can compound monthly, semi-annually or annually. And the disadvantages of the debt avalanche. The debt avalanche is a technique that takes discipline and commitment to pull off, so it can be a clear disadvantage for some. Even with the best intentions of sticking with the debt avalanche system, it is easy to revert to making minimum payments on all the debts, especially after you experience unforeseen expenses like home or auto repairs. That's why most financial planners recommend that people first save up six months emergency fund before attempting any accelerated debt paid off plan. And the key weight takeaways, it's, uh, the debt avalanche is a systematic way for erasing debt relatively fast and cheaply for those who can stick with it. With a debt avalanche, you make the minimum repayments on each source of debt, then using the remaining available funds to pay extra on towards debts with the highest interest rate. So guys, here are two methods that, I mean, I'm sure everyone is aware of them, the different approaches, but giving them a name and defining them helps spread the approach. And I mean, we weren't taught anything like this at school, were we? <laughs> Not at all. So spread the word, guys. What methodology did you use if you've managed to get into debt? If you're paying off debts now, what are you using to deal with it? I know some people have mentioned how they've got some money aside, you know, some cash reserves, they put in a bit of precious metal and they're attacking their debt to try and knock them off one at a time. Let us know in the comments which method you prefer and which you think is better. And if you were taught anything like this back at school or even at university. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to help us produce more content, we have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly donation. We have affiliate links with Amazon eBay and Independent Reserve, and we have our very own handmade merchandise at the Heiser Says blog. Pocket Squares, perfect for every New Year's Eve party. Anyway, guys, have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.